Those of you that don't know what the Honest Opinion series is, it's basically me playing alphas or betas and telling you what I thought. Bear in mind that these games aren't finished yet, so don't take this as the final product. So when I first heard about Due Process, I uh, kind of wrote it off. I just saw the art style and I was like, eh, it doesn't look like a game for me. But then I had heard that the original art style that they showed off six years ago is completely different from what it is now. So I saw the previous concepts and I saw the ones that are coming out today and it really shows how much progress they've actually made between then and there. So I decided to, you know, just check it out, see if I could actually get a free copy. But I tried both methods of trying to get a free copy so that I can play, and I didn't receive either. So I had to do it the old-fashioned way and just buy it outright. For some reason, it's unlisted on Steam, so I had to type it in on Google to find it. So, is this game worth the $25? Let's find out. For those of you that don't know what Due Process is, Due Process is an online multiplayer tactical first-person shooter being developed by an American studio, Giant Enemy Crab, published by Anna Burra Interactive. The game itself is essentially like Rainbow Six Siege and Zero Hour, where it's five versus five with defenders and attackers. Although there are distinct differences between this game and those other two. For one, it's almost impossible for defenders to actually spawn peek or even run outside for that matter, because there is a hunter predator drone that is constantly hovering over the map. And the moment that you even try to step outside, it will gun you down. It's interesting how an unrealistic looking game actually gets that right, whereas Rainbow Six Siege and Zero Hour both just like let the bad guy run outside and the only thing that you know prevents him from actually not going outside is just the fact that we can actually see where you are. The defender gets highlighted and that's about it until he goes back inside and gets shot at. Like nobody just shoots at you. But yeah that being said it's not impossible to kill people on the outside. Like there are certain windows that you could look out and if they just so happen to be walking by you can not shoot at them. The game actually allows you to wall bang people but not every wall does that just certain ones. Any walls that are made out of wood you can wall bang but other than that i'm not entirely sure what else is wall bangable another thing that sets this game apart from those other two games is just the fact that both sides have limited resources now what do i mean by that well just before each round starts they put you in like this tiny little room that's kind of like an armory for the defenders for the attackers it's almost always in a swat truck this is basically a planning stage where you can actually plan out what you want to do where you want to go you can even mark it on the map and people will see it physically in the actual world which is pretty neat but each side has like a wall of weapons with generally about two to three of each weapon and one sniper and a limited amount of grenades or flash grenades or smoke bombs they also have like a big wall breaching shield looking thing that makes you naruto run and like a tiny sticky bomb with a clacker it can be used to blow up the sticky bomb from a certain distance putting a hole in a wall destroying doors or blowing up a fan cool little toys that the SWAT has for the defending team they have barbed wire which is basically used to slow down the SWAT and you can pretty much place it anywhere. Molotov which is also used to slow down the SWAT except you can't really walk through that because it's fire. Pretty much an instant kill. The fire does fizzle out after a certain amount of time though. They also have a flare which is basically used to light up the darkness because the defending team along with the attacking team are able to go in and actually turn off the lights if they find the power box. The attacking team has a limited pair of night vision goggles and the defending team can use flares to basically blind the enemy and light up the area at the same time. This is actually crucial because the night vision goggles can basically see anything at night whereas the defending team can't really see anything if they decide to turn off the the power and a big freaking gatling shotgun looking thing which i haven't really found to be that useful because ammo is really limited and you have to be really close to actually be useful with it so i really try just to avoid it to be honest it's a cool gun but not that great pretty inaccurate so yeah speaking of ammo it's limited as i've said before they really only allow you to have like three mags one in the chamber and two on standby but honestly it's not a big deal because matches are relatively fast and like you never really need to use all of it unless you're actually having like a real standoff with somebody or every team dies like stupid fast which that does kind of happen sometimes but even then you'll probably run out of time because the matches are relatively short yeah you see the defending team is basically preventing the SWAT from trying to disarm a bomb and the bomb can spawn in multiple different locations that could either be beneficial to the defending team or not beneficial at all when somebody begins to disarm the bomb both teams can actually see you disarming it, it 
pops up at the bottom of your screen, and that can be used to bait either side, to be honest. The defending team needs at least 10 seconds to disarm the bomb. If it gets any lower than that, then you basically lose. At the moment, the game doesn't actually tell you if the enemy team has all died yet. It's up to the players to actually inform the people that are still alive that the enemy team is dead. Like, it does show on the screen when everybody is dead, but it doesn't, like, notify you. Like, there's been so many times when nobody decided to go for the bomb, even though the enemy team is dead. Speaking of people that are dead, when you actually kill an attacker or defender, you are able to actually pick up some of the gadgets that they have, along with weapons. Like, if he dies and he drops a grenade, the other team can pick it up and use it against him in the next round. Pretty neat. Rounds generally go up to about four if you're completely demolishing the other team, but I think that there was a bug where we basically went 0 and 6, but I also heard that that was kind of a feature, so I'm not entirely sure. But rounds could definitely go pretty high, depending on how well balanced the teams are, and pretty low if you're demolishing. But generally, it stops at about 4 to 5 if you're demolishing. Speaking of which, I noticed that the game was pretty easy for a very long time, but then, like, towards the end of my play session, I just got demolished, so I think they need to really, like, balance the teams, because I felt like for the longest time that I was actually doing, like, really good, like, I was too good for this game, and then I got my shit kicked in. So yeah, balancing for sure. There were times in the game where it would either crash or it would feel like it was about to crash, and it usually didn't happen during games, but more like afterwards. But in the times that it actually did crash in games, I think the cool thing about the game is that if you crash and the game is still going on, you can actually come back into the game. The game will basically put you back in where you left off, which I think that's really cool and really something that other games like this should adopt. The UI looks pretty cool inside the game, but I think my biggest issue with it is just the inviting system because you aren't able to like invite through Steam. They have like this weird like system. I'm not entirely sure how it actually works, but I just had people just join me when I tried to play. So yeah, their inviting system is pretty weird. I hope they just make it so that I can just invite people through Steam. And yeah, they also have like a tutorial system where you can basically figure out the game and use all the cool looking gadgets and all that stuff. It's basically like a shooting range also. It definitely tries to teach you the basics, even though I didn't actually get it at first, but I got through it. So yeah, the mode that I was playing was casual, but there is going to be a ranked system to show how good you really are. As of the timing of this recording, you aren't able to actually play the ranked system. So I have no idea what that's going to be like at the timing of this recording. The sounds in the game are okay. Whenever the attacking team throws in grenades, I never hear the grenades. I always just get into the initial blast. Like, I don't even know if there's actually sounds for the grenades when they pop in. And also, there's also constant, like, ringing from the uh, fire alarms, which I feel like they should be muffled if you're uh, already dead because they just kind of get annoying. And also, you can hear them through the loading screen the constant dinging and beeping from the bomb and also the fire alarm system because of the explosions that was really annoying to be honest i really wish that i could have seen my kill death ratio because it doesn't actually tell you how many people you killed and how many times you died that's the one thing that i kind of wish that this game had was just being able to see your stats i mean i know that it's going to be added in eventually but at the timing of this recording it was not in the game which is just a shame because i wanted to see how i was doing but oh well they do have a reloading feature but i don't think that they have like a fast reloading feature. When I had the shotgun in my hands, I had to constantly tap R to put a shell into the weapon. If I would be able to just like double tap R so that he keeps, you know, reloading the weapon and then tap R again to like stop in case there's like somebody nearby, that would be nice. But having to constantly tap R was kind of annoying. The gameplay is fine, but there are a few things like the guns didn't seem like they were giving me a whole lot of feedback as in there wasn't enough simulation to show that a bullet was actually firing off. If anything, the bullets kind of felt like lasers but i mean then again it is kind of close quarters so i guess it's not that big a deal but one thing that is kind of big a deal is that sometimes the bullets didn't always register hits even though i was clearly like shooting them in the face for the most part and yeah there are only three maps but every week they shift the areas in different locations so that it's you know not always stale like basically each piece of the map is like a square and they'll move those squares around in like different areas from what i understand it's randomly generated but i can't really say for sure if that's true or not but it changes after every week and i'm forced to like try to remember all the maps again so that definitely keeps it interesting but was all of this worth 25 bucks plus tax which is like really 27 dollars i would say that the price is a bit high just with the content that's here but if you do have the funds to actually purchase this game it is actually pretty fun again i was actually surprised about this game because i actually didn't like the way that the art style looked because it kind of reminded me of uh borderlands a little bit which i have nothing against borderlands I'm just saying that I'm not a fan of the art style. So that threw me off a little bit.
bit, but the game is definitely fun. And I do recommend that people should actually play this if you have the funds. I'm sure more content is going to be added to the game pretty soon here. And the developers have definitely confirmed it. So this game is, for me, better than I thought it was going to be. The price is just a bit high, but I'm sure with all the content that's going to get added, then it's going to be well worth it, I would say. So that is the video. What are your thoughts on Due Process? Have you actually played it? Is it a game that you would recommend? Let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you're someone that enjoys the fact that I cover games like Due Process, be sure to like the video, share the video, and comment down below. If you're someone that's new, be sure to subscribe and ding the bell. You never know, you might find something that you like on the channel. If you're someone that would like to support the channel, check out my Patreon. Just send two bucks a month. It really helps. And with that all being said, I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch, and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.